Here I have a very interesting case for you, um, which will illustrate something that is really, really important to know about when you uh, are a medical student and when you become a doctor. And I'd like to present a real case that we saw some time ago of a 12-year-old boy who presented with generalized lymphadenopathy and splenomegaly uh, concurrent with some weight loss and sweating at night. And a full blood count was done which showed that his white cell count was very, very low. I put the normal in brackets so that you could compare. He also had a low hemoglobin and anemia, but his platelet count was actually normal. If you look at the differential count, the neutrophils were very low and the lymphocytes as well. But with this generalized lymphadenopathy and uh, splenomegaly, there was a strong suspicion that he may have a leukemia and a peripheral blood smear was done. If you look at this uh, representative sample of his smear, what you can see is a lot of red blood cells. Um, let's just show you here. So you've got all these red blood cells all over the place. Um, there are some blood platelets as well. You can see some over there. But you don't really see any white blood cells or leukemic cells. And the challenge that this doctor ha had was that there was a strong clinical suspicion of leukemia. And he was sure that something must be out there. But how could one reliably find them? So your colleague suggested that, that in this patient with a very low blood counts, that you do a Buffy smear. And to do a Buffy smear, you first need to do something else. Now let's quickly look at this. So we, we've drawn a, a tube of blood from this patient. You can see it's a uh, purple top tube, which usually means that it contains the anticoagulant EDTA. And this tube will now be centrifuged and once centrifuge, you will see that the blood will separate out into different layers, like you can see here, whereby um, you will have a lower layer down here, which are uh, which contains the red blood cells, a translucent layer up top containing the plasma, and a yellow brownish layer in the middle which we call the buffy coat buffy coat let's just write that right so if you look at this the plasma does not contain any cells the red blood cell layer contains mainly red blood cells and the buffy coat then contains two types of cells mainly white blood cells and blood platelets. Okay, so we've got white blood cells and we've got platelets in the Buffy coat. So let's see what was actually seen under the microscope. Now, just to remind you, um, this was the initial blood smear. As you would remember, uh, quite a lot of red blood cells and platelets visible, spread out, but you could see no uh, white blood cells. And then this is one of the Buffy smears that were made. Now I want you to see a few things here. Firstly, just notice the platelets. Um, they are much more concentrated and closer together than what you see here on the original smear. So a lot more platelets as expected. We said that the Buffy coat was a concentrate of white blood cells and platelets. So you see lots of platelets and suddenly you also see quite a number of uh, white blood cells. You can see all of them uh, over there. And then the one that we are interested in uh, in this particular patient is whether this patient has leukemia as expected by the doctor. And if you look at this uh, other part of the Buffy smear from the same patient, you see this cell here, and that is a leukemic cell. And in another video at a later stage, we will go into more details about why uh, this would be a leukemic cell. But to just summarize this, 
This patient was found to have an acute lymphoblastic leukemia based on a number of tests. And you can see here that the Buffy coat was very useful to at least come to that, to that suspicion and a bone marrow was done which confirmed it. So in summary, what have we seen? Well, we've taken a tube of cells from a patient with very low counts. We centrifuged it into layers. From the layers, we took the Buffy coat, the middle section, and from that made a blood smear, which is called a Buffy smear. The Buffy smear showed us the rare cells that we were looking for in this patient with a very low white cell count. So let's just write here uh, low white blood cell count. So that's where it is useful. But it can also be used for other things. For instance, we can use it to extract DNA. And this is quite logical. If you think about the fact that red blood cells do not contain a nucleus. Um, let's just draw a red blood cell there. So the red blood cell does not have a nucleus. So this is not a good place to find DNA. And the same with the plasma where there's little cells. That's also not the best place to find DNA. But the Buffy coat containing white blood cells with nuclei uh, would be a very good source of DNA. And then lastly, one could also use the Buffy coat in some instances to, an to um, isolate parasites such as malaria. This is not the same as a thick smear, but at least with special stainings, one can sometimes see malaria in a Buffy coat. I'm sure some of you are wondering where the Buffy coat get its name from. And if you look at uh, the word buff, that basically means uh, light brown. That's just the color. And an example of where this color is used is uh, in this uniform of New York firemen. They've got a buff colored uniform or coat. So just remember, think of this uniform and you think of Buffy coat. And you can also think of what they do. Firemen fight fires. White cells fight infections. Firemen close gas pipes that may leak. And platelets close down leaky blood vessels. So in that way you can remember easily that the Buffy coat contains infection-fighting white blood cells and pipe-plugging platelets.